Hi, I'm Bob and Osterhout. I want to talk to you about sleep. Uh, sleep is a very common problem in our culture today, uh, and it's even a problem in many cases when people don't know that it's a problem. And let me talk about that part first. Uh, the average adult uh, needs uh, seven to nine hours of sleep per night, uh, between seven and eight is the average. The average uh, child needs between nine and ten hours of sleep per night, and that's all the way through the teen years. Um, and it's a sad thing, but most people in our culture do not get sufficient sleep. And there is more and more research being done on the, and they're discovering that there's a significant negative effect to that. Um, one study found that uh, people who go 18 hours of, of consecutive activity without sleep uh, function at about the same level on problem solving tasks as people who are legally drunk and getting by on six hours of, or less of sleep per night over a period of two weeks has just about the same effect. Uh, so most people are sleep deprived. Uh, well over, uh, there was a recent survey and it seemed like 60 some percent of people say they start their work week feeling unrested. And that diminishes uh, our ability to function significantly. Uh, Any time that we're overtired, we push ourselves to get things done, and when we push ourselves, we're always creating extra tension. Uh, this is most obvious if you ever go to a high school track meet and, and as you look at the distance runners and the ones who are at the end of the race out of energy, their shoulders are up and they're scrunching their face and none of that, that's actually using up energy, okay, it makes them run slower. Uh, but that's what happens when you push yourself beyond your limits is you can't separate uh, the work that needs to be done from the other muscles working and so you wind up building all this tension and creating even more problems and more difficulties. So um, it's an interesting pattern that I've noticed in, in working with teenagers that uh, I always ask them about sleep uh, and I would have to say between a third and half of, of teenagers who are referred to me because of problems in school or behavior problems or, or difficulties, uh, we start out with sleep, okay? Are you getting enough sleep? Usually no, okay? So let's start there. Uh, get them on a regular sleep routine and there's a significant portion where that solves the problem. Once they're fully rested, they're able to concentrate, they're able to get along a lot better, they're not so touchy or edgy, they're more respectful. Uh, life is easier when there's less tension and when you sleep better, there's less tension. Okay. Uh, the other problem is people say they have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. Uh, and tension plays a significant role in that, uh, both mental and physical tension. What tends to happen is if someone can't get to sleep, uh, they look at the clock and they say, oh my God, I've, I've got to fall asleep. And so immediately your body gets into action mode. You've got to do something, okay? And your mind is activating your body and that's the conditions where you're least likely to sleep, okay? So uh, if you're building tension in your body and if your mind is active, basically you won't sleep. So the key is to work on both ends uh, of, the, of the problem. Uh, give the mind somewhere else to go, okay? So a neutral rhythm phrase, and that's described in the, in the videotape on uh, clearing our mind. But basically you find a, a short phrase, uh, six to 12 syllables, that you repeat with the diaphragmatic breathing. And the diaphragmatic breathing is also described in another video. But it's basically bringing the air all the way to the bottom of your lungs, uh, as you breathe in and then just relaxing as you breathe out. So the diaphragm moves down as you breathe in, comes up as you breathe out. Diaphragm is a muscle at the bottom of your lungs. When you get that slow, easy rhythm of the diaphragm and you're repeating that phrase, uh, then you're getting a very deep rest. And I found that even if you don't fall asleep, getting that rest is a lot more helpful than looking at the clock and worrying about whether you're gonna get enough sleep. Actually, I, I had a personal situation where I took a, uh, 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 decongestant uh, before I went to bed, which was a big mistake because uh, uh, I soon learned that that just wakes me up. And so I was bright eyed and not about to go to sleep. And I know from, uh, from having worked on call uh, that if I don't get sufficient sleep, uh, I don't function very well the next day in my job and I'll even call in, uh, I've called in sick in the past uh, when I've stayed up with a sick child or something like that because I know that my mind isn't as clear as it needs to be to do my best work. 
Um, so, but I, so I took this decongestant and it just was not falling asleep, but I simply continued to do the diaphragmatic breathing and repeated a, a little rhythm phrase throughout the night. And uh, every once in a while I would glance at the clock but not worry about it and just recognize that I was resting and doing the best I could under the circumstances. And um, I might have slept a half an hour somewhere in there, but uh, basically got up and went to work and functioned pretty well. Uh, I was really tired that night, uh, but a big part of what happens in sleep is that we need rest. And if we're fighting with ourselves, we're not either even resting. So if you can't fall asleep, uh, the, the key is to just do the diaphragmatic breathing with a rhythm phrase. If there's not another cause keeping you awake, that generally will help. Uh, and you'll find yourself sleeping before long. Uh, other causes that may keep you awake uh, usually revolve around tension, particularly if there's a buildup of tension in the legs or something like that. Uh, doing some stretching, uh, taking a warm bath uh, often helps. It, it also helps to have a transition uh, before you go to sleep, and this is helpful in getting children to sleep. Uh, have a similar routine every night where you have maybe a glass of warm milk, milk with some honey and, and uh, tell them a story and then lay down with them a bit and then they go to sleep. And there's a sequence that they go through every night and do the same thing uh, uh, when adults need to sleep. Uh, it's generally not a good idea to uh, use the television to put to sleep. That will just uh, either bore you or exhaust you, and uh, television tends to be a stimulus. It's designed to grab and catch our attention. Uh, so it isn't a helpful way to, to establish a habit of using that to go to sleep. And uh, reading uh, isn't necessarily harmful, except that you set up a habit that when you start to read, then you not often go to sleep. So it may interfere with your, with your reading a little bit. But the, the best thing to do is uh, have your bed be only a place for sleep. It's not a place to solve problems. If you start thinking about a problem, say, okay, I'll do that when I'm out of bed, okay? Um, and if you need to, get up and solve the problem and then go back to bed and use that just for sleep. And when you lay down, immediately start the diaphragmatic breathing, repeat your rhythm phrase, and get a good night's rest. I hope that works for you. Uh, good luck with that. Thank you.